In few of our recent tutorials, we have understood how exactly we gather and manage the requirements as a part of ALM requirement management and also understood a lot of options which helps you to nourish them and in fact manage them with other related modules and link them in order to have the traceability. In today's tutorial, we'll be getting into the test plan in order to convert these requirements into test cases. And yes, of course, not only the basics, just write, writing the test cases, we'll be working with what is parameters, how can we convert a requirement directly into test plan, and lot many other things about details, calling a parameter, and making use of configurations and several other things. So let's explore and understand a basic tutorial on test plan today. So team, we have covered a previous tutorial about requirements and business models and a lot of details with respect to requirements. In today's module, we'll be moving to the next one, which is the test plan. And here in testing, we have a lot of other modules, which I'll be covering in a different tutorial. But the first one is the basic module, which we can get started with. So test plan is a module where you create, manage and organize your test cases which generally allows you to have all the details which a test case must be created with and have all the details what a test case must have, including the objective, test steps, expected result, and even the test data. So all the information can lie here, and even you can run a single set of instruction with multiple set of data with help of the parameters, and we will be understanding them in more detail. So here, the root folder is subject. You must remember that the root folder is present by default. You cannot modify, delete, or rename it. So very first thing is to create a new folder with our project name, Flight Reservation. And under this, we will be creating set of requirements, or basically the test for each requirement, which you will be covering in test. So the next option is to create a new test, and you name that as login which you created earlier so remember team throughout the tutorials you must remember that we are not really executing a real-time project which is quite vast and quite longer but here we are just trying to interact with the ALM and understand how different options can be used so when you give the name to it you also have a choice to define the type of it it might have different provisions to select a type for example we have old scenario business process business flows LR scenario, which is a load runner scenario, a QA inspect test, system test, web API, that is virtual API XP test, and whatnot. It's just that by default you are having these options, but if you have proper add-ins and extensions included in your project for different softwares, you may have different type of test here. <coughs> so for now, we are using a manual test as we are don't, we're not going to integrate <coughs> any additional tools for automation. But yes, you can very well integrate it to LoadRunner and even the UFT and many other tools which now ALM supports. So here you can say the creation date, but if you don't mention that, it will by default pick the system date and time created by this person and the status of the test right now. So it is designed or imported, ready or in repair mode. So whatever the mode is, you can define the status. Additionally, you can definite, definitely mention a description about the test which you are creating and include certain attachments to that. If you have any screenshots or URL or maybe any kind of you know system information to capture. Press OK in order to create that. Now, once you create a test, on the right side you will find a lot of information to be incorporated and included in the test. For example, the details are one which we defined while creating the test itself. The second is the design steps, which is your precise test case, which you can write here. So, and then we have parameters to define parameters, configurations about the system and global variables. So if you have any global variables, you can use them here. Attachments will be here. And remember those test coverage option from the requirement will have a return in this option as well. So either you can link a requirement to the test or a test to the requirement. Further, a link, a defect can also be raised from here or it can be linked to a particular test. If you find a test uh, defect in future, you can link it back to a particular test which helped you to find that defect. Also, you can determine the dependencies if you have any to this particular test. And business model and history will come by default. So let's start writing some test cases here. 
So you have to click on this button, which is new step in order to start writing a test. So let's assume that we are trying to test an application which has a login page and has three steps to perform login. That is enter username, enter password and click on login button. But we may also try to understand together that with writing test cases, how we can make use of a parameter which will allow us to pass multiple set of data using single set of instruction. So for that, let's create a parameter first. Or you can also do it while creating the test case. For example, let me first show you how to do that while writing the test case. So assume that my step one is to enter the username. So enter, enter username as space and click on the insert parameter option here. So when you are in a test step, you will be allowed to insert a parameter. While inserting, you will get a pop-up like this and you can also create a parameter. But it's very recommended that you first initially create your parameters and define them with the default value and then use them while creating the design steps. So let's create a parameter right here and name it as user. You don't want to conflict with your application keywords so you can give them a different naming convention. While creating a parameter, you can also define a default value, which will be the valid set of data, which can be accessed by the application. Because when you try with multiple set of data, you may be trying with different invalid set of values. Thus, default value will always be mentioned with the parameter itself, so that people can always refer the parameter to understand that what is the valid set of data to be used in order to access this application. So assume that my username is hello and say OK. Now a parameter is listed. You are free to use it. So to use that, just select, highlight it and press OK. Now you see a three angular brackets on both the sides, which shows that this is a parameter. What is the value of it will be displayed when you come to the test lab and execute your test cases. So right now you can only see the parameter name. Also, let us fill the expected result here, uh, which says username should be entered and displayed. And say OK. So your first step is now added and you can see that very well. So let's go back and follow the other way around, which is a professional way of incorporating the uh, parameters first and then using them. So say, for example, PWD is my next variable, which is to use the password. And default password is my valid password. Say, uh, password is hello at the rate one. Or you can use anything, welcome at the rate one or password at the rate one or whatever it is. Say OK. It's just that we are trying to create a dummy account here and now the parameters are created. Let's go back to design steps and include another one. The next step is to insert the password. So say you put it as enter password as. Again, we will be using a parameter in order to pass multiple set of data in future. So select this, highlight it and press OK. So password is now inserted. The expected outcome for this will be password should be entered as masked. So this would be the expected result of a password because it's generally uh, encrypted and hidden. Say OK. Now the step three is to click on login button. and may not have a value to be passed on. So you can say here something generic so that you can use it for valid as well as invalid because you are trying to use a parameter which may pass a valid or invalid data. So home page should be displayed only for valid registered user. So this statement may be helping us to fulfill. You can modify a little bit better professionally based on your application, but just for understanding, we are doing this. All right, so now the parameter use 
and we have understood how to write our test cases. So you can include all the necessary information what you have here with respect to the test. Similarly, you can create more tests and write detailed steps for that and make use of parameters if in case you are looking forward to pass multiple values. If you want to modify any of the tests which you have written, you can use the button here which is to edit a step or reorder the sequence of the steps if you think you have written the orders in other way around. You can always save and export this to an external, external format like Excel and all to using this option here which is with help of the additional add-ins. So if you have the add-in related to Excel, you can always export it and save them. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We will get back to you with the second part of this in order to understand beyond this. Well, I think after this tutorial, all of us is very much clear with uh, how exactly to write our test cases by making use of parameters in order to run a single test case with multiple set of instructions. The same will be elaborated when you come to test lab and see that how exactly I can pass multiple set of data when it comes to execution of the same test cases with help of the parameters. But this is not almost everything about test plan. We do have a lot many other specialized options to be utilized as a part of test planning. And we will be looking at the same in the next tutorial that is part two of test plan. So stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular episode team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.